I think we're good. What up, what up, what up, y'all? This is uh, very strange for me. I'm actually streaming at 1 o'clock in the morning. And it's uh, it's kind of an indicator for how my week has been going. Uh, I just came back from a road trip to Philly. Visit the fam. It was dope. Uh, it was really productive. However, it did set me back in quite a bit of work. So um, every type of work that I do is all behind right now. <laughs> it's all late. Everything that I send out is late. Everything that I work on is late. So I'm doing a late stream uh, to kind of cover some bases. Um, I had some guys ask me, uh, ask me to do some updates um, or, or just like a walkthrough on warping on the NPC. Um, some guys in the NPC gang group were asking, uh, I guess, you know, they hadn't really used that feature yet and uh, a lot of new guys in there. So I wanted to kind of show my warp techniques that I use to get my, um, to get my chops, uh, kind of perfected. So, you know, if you're chopping up samples and you're looking to kind of change the pitch and, uh, you know, change the tempo at will, um, this is the way that I do it. And it's cool because it allows a lot of different experimentation, uh, without having to commit to, you know, a particular key or, um, uh, you know, it just allows you to transpose the sample and stuff like that, uh, without messing everything up or change the tempo. So I'm going to walk you through how I do that. So I got the screen up here. Um, I just kind of grabbed a sample that I had already, um, already in, in my NPC and, Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike for this, um, but I pitched it up a couple semitones just so you can hear it. So let's go ahead and just mess around with it. All right, boom. Still getting used to these transitions, y'all. So forgive me if it's a little uh, looks a little crazy on screen. Um, all right, so this is the sample I got. All right, so something pretty simple, um, but this isn't your typical kind of one, two, three, four chop. I mean, it is, you know, you can see one, two, three, fours, but the cadence is a little bit different. It's not, you know, it's not basically on every count. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know what I mean? So it's got a different different cadence to it. Um, but it does kind of showcase um, when I'm playing through it, you can kind of, you can kind of hear certain chops are a little shorter than the other. Um, and sometimes when you get a sample that's kind of weird where it's not exactly on beat, it's not quantized per se, um, or, you know, it's not like they're playing to a perfect, you know, metronome um, rhythm, you know what I'm saying? You'll get you'll get sample chops that are, that are off a little bit, right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and convert this to a new program. And I like to use pad parameters. Um, because it just allows you to change the start and end points on the samples um, after the fact. So go ahead, hit do it. Go to track five. It's usually where I put my loops. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and bring, bring that sample up. All right, so... All right, so say I wanted to lay that down, right? Um, let's go ahead and, you know, I had a tempo in my head, so I, you know, I tap tempo and in. And let's, let's say like one, 164, all right? Actually, let's bring it to 160. All right, and we'll go ahead and just lay that down real quick. Like you can already hear the tempo is faster than the sample. I mean, slower than the sample, so it's it's not going to land on. It's not going to land on exactly.
All right, so you hear how the sample's real choppy, and that's really because the um, the sample is faster than the tempo I selected, all right? So I'm gonna go into program edit, all right? And the first thing we're gonna do is hit this little arrow at the top, right? To change it from current to all, all right? And what we're gonna do is tap that warp button in the bottom left corner, all right, and the default BPM is 120, so it's going to automatically put it on 120. All right, so what we're going to do is go ahead and play it, and you'll hear it changed the tempo when we hit warp and it changed it to 120. The default tempo of that sample is not 120. So, um, you know, you can put the tempo if you have it in the name of the sample. If you have like a pre made sample, you can go ahead and put the BPM right now, and it's going to change all those chops to that default BPM. All right. But we don't have that on this sample, so we're gonna go ahead and do it by ear. So what you can hear is 120 BPM actually sped it up and made it even more choppy, all right? So let's go ahead and bring this up. And let's let's go ahead and make it 160 as well and see what that sounds like. Much better, right? So like everything, everything's covering, it's covering the entire amount, right? So we're not, we don't have uh, any gaps there. Now it might be a little too slow. So let's just back it off a little bit to 156. All right, that gave us the gaps back. All right, so as you can hear, most of it is good, but basically there's maybe like two chops that are still a little too short. So this is when you have like a complicated sample where, you know, the uh, the chops don't exactly match um, tempo wise. So what's cool about this is uh, we're gonna go up, we're gonna hit that square, go to current. All right, and now, just this goes to the individual sample so now we're not everything's already warped to 158 all the pads are the same right so usually I'll keep that BPM synced to 158 or you know whatever you you come up with to make it even and then I'll find the trouble chop so so it sounds like the second the second one right is a little short so what you can do is you can tap on the stretch percentage, right? And just stretch it like 2%, 1%, 2%—not quite enough. Let's make it three. Much better. All right. So this is before. After. This has the second one has the same problem, so stretch it three percent. All right, so boom, we're locked in. And what's cool about that is now if we want to change the tempo and we're like, all right, I don't I don't like that. Uh, I'm gonna slow this beat down to say 120. All right. Or let's make it like 124. Boom, you're set, right? So we're like, all right, that's a little too slow. Let's bring it up to maybe like 148. And that's the tempo we want to go with. So you can switch the tempo around. You can also switch the pitch around, all right? So what I like to do to switch the pitch now that we took it off of all, right, and we have it on current. Now if we want to affect all the different pads, we go to master, and we go to the semi tab, and we can change the pitch, right? So...
so we're good so now we can kind of transpose it you know kind of go to whatever key we want and anytime we want to change it we can just come here or anytime we want to change it change the tempo we just come to the main screen and change the tempo so that's the way i like to warp things um you go through a little bit of trouble early on getting it right but once you're locked in and you got that uh that bpm sync on there you're good to go All right, so that's pretty much it for that. Um, one tip I wanted to give y'all as well, depending on which um, which way y'all are uh, working, whether it's standalone or um, controller mode. All right, you're gonna wanna go into settings and you're gonna wanna turn on your best available um, warp algorithm. So default, on the NPCs um, when you're using standalone. Um, it says basic here, but it, it, I believe it says NPC algorithm on the standalone devices. So when you're in standalone, you'll see it say NPC. You wanna turn it to Pro 10 uh, because that's, that's the best algorithm at this time um, that's available on the standalone units. If you're in controller mode, you're gonna wanna turn it to Elastic Pro. And that's, that's the best quality, as it says, best sound. So that's going to make sure um, your Elastic Pro is going to make sure you have the the best quality time stretch algorithm for um, you know for when you're time time stretching and warping your samples. Now, what's cool is what I'll do is I'll use the Live Two and standalone, and basically when I bring the uh, when I go into controller mode, uh, it'll automatically upgrade to the Elastic Pro. So I always keep my I always keep my um, you know computer with with the uh, uh, controller mode, I always keep it with the last T pro activated and basically it'll go from pro 10. And when I load it up into the computer, load the beat up into the computer, into the NPC software, it'll automatically upgrade that algorithm. So you don't have to really trip too much about the quality because pro 10 is not really great quality. It'll, I use it like a placeholder, right? So it's, it's better than the old algorithm where, you know, you can kind of hear it, and get a good feel for what you're going for. You can you know, set your key, set your tempo and all that stuff like I just did, but it's not gonna sound as good. So um, typically what I'll do is I'll compose my whole beat and when I'm ready to mix everything, I'll put it in controller mode or in my case, I have the, the touch here for controller mode. I'll just take the SP, I mean the uh, SD card out and you know, throw it in the, in the card reader, load the beat up in the software, resave it to my computer and, um, you know, that's that's the quick way that that it'll upgrade the algorithm. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for warp right now. I'm trying to think if there's any more um, any more tips I can give you all. Um, as far as warping, everything else is pretty uh, once you once you kind of get that those original steps locked in, um, you're good to go. And you can always go back in and kind of tweak individual samples if you don't, you know, to start and end points and stuff like that. Um, you can always do that, especially if you have um, pad parameters. Pad parameters is cool um, because, you know, basically you can change the start and end points and it doesn't affect the other slices. So, so for instance, this chop, if we didn't like where it ended, we wanted to bring it out a little more. We can extend the end a little more and it doesn't doesn't affect the next pad so you see this goes to 192 at the end next pad starts at 189.9 so um, that's the advantage of pad parameters is you know you can change the start and end points and uh, there's two ways you can do it actually you can go in sample edit you can hit this link slices button and turn it off I like to keep the link slices button on when I'm chopping and then when I convert uh, convert it to a program then you know I'll choose pad parameters um, just for organizational purposes, so you so your chops aren't all over the place. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. This is gonna be a short stream. I just wanted to kind of get this video out. I knew I wasn't gonna have time to do a lot of editing this week, um, so I wanted to get something live out there, something recorded, and on YouTube. And I'm also streaming to um, Facebook as well, uh, kind of experiment with that. But I'll be doing a lot more of these, not at one o'clock in the morning, hopefully. Um, 
you know, somewhat normal human hours, but I just wanted to go ahead and get this out for you guys. I did I did promise I'd record it, so good to go, good to go. Um, 